Now, joining these together, you'll see that we now have this one element that we can select all at once. And turning on the control points, just like the way that you can turn on control points for a surface, you can see that you can begin to select points and pull them up or down. Now if we take a look at our component here, we can see that um, really what's happening, when we look at these blue dashed lines, is that these lines indicate that the points that are here, the control points that are here, can move up. And by moving up, you'll notice that this constitutes what we saw in the drawings as a mountain. And the lines here as what we can define as a valley. So when you start to set up your file and your design motif, you have to be thinking about really what these lines are indicating. Now, yes, they do indicate that a crease can occur there or a fold can occur there. But they also indicate something even more specific, which is which direction you may fold. So I'm going to go ahead and change the name of this layer now to Mountain. And my other one to Valleys. Now knowing that those are mountains and valleys, right, we can decide how far, right, we want to be able to move these guys. So if we take these points, we can move them really far up, for instance, and you'll see that the design element will begin to change. We move them really far down, and it's pretty much flat, right? And so it's very easy to begin to interface with um, the design element. So let's go ahead and move this guy over. And I'll just move them over one more time, and I'll copy this little boundary. All right. So this boundary here is also very important um, because this is really defining what is the um, border condition, right, of our design element, which ultimately will impact the way in which this element will be able to create um, a chain or a, a kind of linear array or a two-dimensional array or a kind of uh, folded surface. So I'm going to call this my um, design border. Great. So from this really simple set of lines, right, we can get to something which is seemingly more complex and also indicates uh, the relationship of the color of the line, right, to the ability for that um, uh, line to ultimately uh, modulate, in this case by its control point moving. So the, the pattern that we're indicating uh, in 2D is really the um, design motif. That's your two-dimensional design motif, um, the crease lines. And the modulated component, uh, which we have in 3D, is really your three-dimensional design motif, right, or your folded surface, your folded component. Now, before we go any further, um, because mesh modeling isn't necessarily um, uh, everyone's flavor, you know, not, not everyone is so familiar with it. Um, let's take a second to address any questions you might have regarding the process of going from the two-dimensional motif to the three-dimensional folded component. So a question that we had was, how do you begin to modify the control vertices? Well, remember that a mesh has control points. So I can use the control point on to select the points and move them. Now, I'm using Rhino 5, so you can see that I also am using the gumball functionality. 
with that on, it gives me a quick and easy way to begin to drag my control points up and down. Now, if you notice, if I move these down, what will happen is that what was a mountain now becomes a valley. And to ensure that they all act as one element, you need to join all of those faces together. So I'll, I'll run through that one more time. Um, this time what I'm going to do is just do a variation on that guy. I'm going to do my um, component just like this. We'll take a look at the difference that emerges whenever we just have something as simple as this. So I'll say um, 3D face, clicking right over here always going in a counterclockwise fashion. That ultimately ensures that each of these faces are oriented the same way. I join. I'm just going to move this guy over. And then I turn on my control points. Move these guys up, and I have another component here. Now, because I've already uh, created a couple of components here, um, as we've been modeling, I do not want to um, accidentally lose my work. So I'm going to go ahead and save this. Now, just so that you guys um, know, uh, you can see that in the workshop files that we distributed, we actually included a file that has a collection of design motifs here for you. Um, so these are here for you to uh, explore and um, experiment with. Um, so uh, also, if you'd like to just try using one of those instead of modeling your own, you're more than welcome to. But once you have this, um, design element, this three-dimensional folded surface, how do you begin to actually create a more expansive covering with that surface? Um, how do you, for instance, make a chain or make a field? 